Last week, I talked about how we get electricity in Ontario. But this week, something fun happened. And I want to share with you how we could actually see on the graphs the difference on the demand of electricity that we needed. So let's see what we noticed. So first of all, let's see if I can make this a bit bigger for you. So first of all, as mentioned last week, we have here electricity production. So if I go here to the supply, so I'm going to put a link at the end of this video for what I did last week, but basically the energy source for electricity in Ontario are nuclear power plants, hydroelectric electricity in dark blue. Here we have natural gas in green, wind energy, and there's a little bit of solar in yellow. So here we have the ups and down of the energy needed during the day and the diminishing uh, need for energy during the night. But here, if you look at the graph from this week, we noticed here that if I'm going to consider only the green line, because the green line is the Ontario demand for electricity, the blue is for uh, what we offer from outside jurisdiction, because we do produce electricity that we sell. But if you look here at the green, at the green line, so here at the top line, you have about 17.7, so about 18,000 megawatts that was uh, needed in Ontario from May 20th to May 22nd. And here we have on 23rd to 24th, about 18,000 megawatts. And here, 20, yesterday, about, 20, uh, about 18 megawatts as well. So 18 is more or less the baseline of what we need. However, if you look at the, what we got here, between 20, the 21st of May and the 22nd, and 22nd and 28th, you will see that uh, the demand went up to about 20,000 megawatts. And here, 22nd to 23rd, we also needed about 20,000 megawatts. So here you could see on the graph uh, that there were two days where there was an increase of about 10% more energy demand for Ontario. So the question here is what would have happened for those two days to need more electricity. So here, what was interesting is that on before May 21st, we had temperature between 15 and 20 degrees, which are very comfortable. In the last couple of days, we had temperature of about 20, 23 degrees, which are very comfortable. However, between May 21st and May 23rd, we had temperature of about 28, 29 degrees Celsius. So we had an increase in temperature. So what happened is that people started to use their air conditioners. So here, so this is my interpretation on the graphs, knowing that society doesn't change that much. And the only big difference was the temperature and the use of AC. So here you can see that the air conditioning need for our society, just for the lifestyle, increased by 10% how much energy we needed. So it's not just a few percent where you, there's not, it's always consistent. So when you have a power, uh, a power plant, you need to be able to manage these requests. So that means how did they manage the request? So here you could see on this graph that uh, the orange section, so about the 7,000 7700 megawatts for nuclear power. So that has not changed very much. It was very cons consistent. Um, and the reason for that is that it's much harder to do ups and down with uh, the nuclear power. Now in light blue, you have what we call hydroelectric electricity. And you could see that it's been, it's more or less constant as well. Uh, this is from Niagara Falls. And then you notice that for the 21st and the 22nd, there was a large increase of uh, need of electricity. But in green, you see that there was not much wind. So that means that for that day, there was a lot more use of uh, gas power plants. So here we have 5,500 megawatts. So here we have about a quarter, more than a quarter of uh, the, maybe 30% of the energy produced by gas. And why was gas needed? Because it is an easy way to turn on the generator to get electricity for the grid. Now, what's interesting is if you look to the right a little bit, you notice that from the 22nd, on the 22nd, 
you notice that the wind picked up. So that means that yes, there was a need for air conditioner, but instead of using a non-renewable energy, the wind picked up and the air conditioning ended up using wind energy and therefore using renewable energy. And that's a beautiful thing because instead of using 30% of natural gas, we ended up using here about 30, about 4,000 megawatts. So it's, let's say about half of the energy was needed because of the wind. And that's important because if you have a large province, so here there's about 14 or 15 million people, a large territory with a large demand of uh, electricity on its network, we need to make sure energy is available. And here's a great example on how we had an increased demand and here the province worked with the resources it had. For the first day, it was impossible to be able to do it without the natural gas. And here for the second day on 22nd, we were able to use uh, wind energy. So here you could see that the use for natural gas is very important. We cannot really get the grid going without it because you could see at night that we have uh, a decrease so at the middle of the night so every day we have a decrease then that means that we need to decrease how much we produce we cannot play with the the, the nuclear reactors very easily we can we can switch the valves of uh, the electric the hydroelectric power plant however Niagara Falls is running all the time so they're trying always to maximize the use of that energy and the wind so that at the end, we want to minimize how much gas we use. It's important. It allows people to manage energy, but also minimize the resources, non-renewable resources, and minimize how much pollution we create. So all of this is interesting. So I wanted to share that with you because in some ways, we always think we're at home, we want electricity, but it's important to know where it's from and also the resources we are using because we can change the way we do things. So for example, in at home here, instead of turning on the air conditioner always, usually for the evening, uh, before I go to bed, I turn off the air conditioner and then I, turn, I open my windows because the windows, um, the air goes down to about 20 degrees at night. So the cool air comes in the house. It has higher density. It goes into the base, towards the basement. So by the time we get up, the basement is cooler. The first floor is cool, cooler. So when I get up, I close the windows and I turn on the fan of the house, not the air conditioning, just the fan so that the cool air from the basement circulates. And we have a good comfortable temperature till about one, two, sometimes three o'clock in the afternoon without the use of the air conditioner. So these are things that we can do conscious choice. Is it easy? Does it require me to take a little bit more? take a few more steps to save energy. Yes, I can. But if I can minimize the use of resources, that's also very good. Because in order to have a sustainable ecosystem, sustainable planet, I do believe that if we can recycle, that is important. If we can reuse, it is important. But if we can reduce the energy we use, it's also very important. On this, I'm going to put here a link. So let's see, a link on this side here to the video I did last week about the different types of energy we produce in Ontario. You'll see, you will enjoy it. I'll see you there.